at 3 minutes 53 seconds, Cobain says that a contradiction arises. And this is Cobain's most clever move in the move in the video, and yet and yet it too does not hold water. He says that due to Cyprian's calling the matter local, therefore that universal jurisdiction is refuted. Cobain, I'm really surprised that you made this mistake. This was not a doctrinal matter for Cyprian, it was a matter of free opinion. And so Cyprian says it is relative to bishops and is therefore not contradicting a doctrinal teaching office of the Pope and by common sense should be expected. No contradiction here is given the context of Cyprian's disagreement, even ignoring the shaky text of the false assertion relies on, that it relies on. In fact, if you would see this as a contradiction, you would undermine the universal nature of Cyprian's ecclesiology which is not limited to the local church. To this same end and to prove that Cyprian did in fact believe in matters of doctrine that the Pope acts as the center of the chair of Peter, we know that Cyprian asked for Stephen himself to act to excommunicate and depose another bishop. This is not even possible in an autocephalous ecclesiology because all bishops are supposedly equal. We thus see autocephalacy absolutely and unequivocally falsified in this text. Cyprian wrote for the Pope by an act of the Pope to excommunicate Marcion of Arles in his 66th epistle. We read, quote, Let letters be directed by you into the province and to the people abiding at Arles, by which Marcion being excommunicated, another may be substituted in his place. Unquote. This is game over for the autocephalous interpretation of Cyprian. The Pope can excommunicate a heretical bishop. Quickly was this well known act brought up in the comment section, and, Com and Cabane gives Mayendorf's feeble retort as interpreting Cyprian merely asking Stephen to refrain from communing with the heretic Marcion, and so it is not an action of the Pope, but a non-action. Absolutely laughable. The text undermines this and all other feeble, feeble excuses. Cyprian asks Stephen personally, quote, letters by you, unquote, to write to Marcion by, quote, by which Marcion being excommunicated, another may be substituted in his place, unquote. So it is a positive action by Stephen that excommunicates Marcion, and certainly not Cyprian requesting a passive withdrawal. For two minutes after, Cobain proceeds to try to defend the position of rebaptism, and then concludes that I am unable to see this because I am quote because I am stuck in quote medieval Western and scholastic ways of thinking unquote. This statement is out of line, over presumptuous, and embarrassingly bigoted. The reason rebaptism was not accepted was not on scholastic grounds, and though it was decided and cemented in the medieval context of the third and fourth centuries, so was the p position of rebaptism, as well as as well as the controversy between the two. Now I will be moving on to section two, uh, where I deal with the positive arguments I gave, showing s that Cyprian held to an ecclesiology which resembles the Catholic structure. From time slot 544 to 6, Cabain speaks of the quote where Cyprian teaches that the origin of priestly unity of the church has its source, which to my correction I falsely attributed to his 59th epistle. The quote is in his 54th epistle, and then jumps immediately without exegesis to on the unity of the church to argue that Peter is the icon of the church, and that all others merely derive from Peter. Cobain says little about this passage in On Unity 4, nor its original translation. He waves his hand, hands and declares victory. There are two errors in his interpretation of the text, both stemming from the same sickness, and it's necessary to be interpreted in the Catholic sense. Cobain's interpretation is misguided as he, as he makes all apostolic chairs by identity equivalent to Peter, but Cyprian doesn't speak this way, nor should we expect him to. John has a chair, and James has a chair. James was actually the bishop of Jerusalem, Mark was actually the bishop of Alexandria, not just the pawns of Peter. James and Mark were authoritative essentially, but they ultimately answered to Peter. Yes, bishops are not apostles, but the church is derived wholly from apostolic succession, and not just Petrine sees. Cyprian writes that the other apostles have a like partnership, but that the authority of the twelve answers to the one unity in Peter. It isn't identical to Peter, but it is grounded and sustained and unified in Peter. The other apostles themselves by themselves, James by himself, had an authority to teach. 
Cobain's interpretation both contradicts Cyprian's own words and leads to these contradictions. Though the chair is one, Cyprian says that although this one chair is Peter's, he has in mind a ground in, which is unified in by the one, but not to the exclusion of the others. The apostles intrinsically had authority, but Peter was their chief, their president, and so now do all bishops have authority in like manner by their office, and so far as the Catholic Church is apostolic. His relying on a different source for the Epistle 54 translation and rendering a rendering it as quote the primeval church where sacerdotal unity took its source as a past tense isn't an argument isn't an argument against me or at least it isn't given cyprian's wording of it for cyprian tells cornelius this as a comment about how heretics would dare to in the relative tense set a sail to the throne of peter presently in rome the issue isn't that the origin of priestly unity took its source here in the chief church in the chief church it's that this chief church is identified with the throne of peter and it is rome now the past is, now the past tense rendering or present tense rendering of took or takes its source is not contextually relevant unless you make one false assumption now the present tense rendering or the past tense rendering of took or takes its source is not contextually relevant unless you make one false assumption that the throne of Peter now that those heretics set sail to in the present isn't what it was back then in apostolic times namely that the throne of Peter now isn't the source of unity where the authority of the church is unified that was only the chair of Peter of the apostle Peter yet this is clearly a ridiculous entailment of of the reading of reading the text this way because it is in the relative present context it would further completely contradict the point he made that the blasphemers and the heretics in Cyprian's time dare set sail to Rome. Autocephalists are forced to interpret this statement of ecclesiastical foundation in political terms but Cyprian like the Catholic Church sees it in its purely apostolic line. His past tense rendering shouldn't surprise anyone. Our Lord said of the essential intrinsic principle source of uni unity that it shall not be prevailed against and this is the apostle peter pope chief of the apostles bishops his teaching is thus on the church in essence and not just on the church in a part of time that might change thus it is proper as the overwhelming majority of translations render it that the church of rome now too be the the chief principal church thus prestigious autocephalous authorities agree with this notion of understanding this passage to teach that rome was the principal ancillary center of the universal church saying of this passage that those heretics who cyprian speaks of at that time that quote peter's chair was thus to be found in every sea but especially in rome those who came to rome came to the chair of peter to the primordial church the very source of Episcopal unity. Unquote. This is from Ravenna document of the Catholic Orthodox Dialogue uh, 10 Epistle 54 and 14. Thus relaying the meaning of the text and properly so as an essential fact of the past and present predicating a universal church guaranteed and guided through all ages. The Roman Church is the criterion and principle of the unity of the universal Catholic Church and its orthodoxy. It defines and unifies the chair of Peter as the monoepiscopate. As eminent scholar Nichols relays, quote, Cyprian's projection of the church is in effect that of a truncated cone. The lowest level is provided by the union of local churches, above which comes the united episcopate. But Cyprian fails to indicate the apex which he, which the picture requires. The requirement of the unity which posits the bishop in the local church postulates the pope in the universal church. If one rejects the need for a head in the latter, one necessarily does the same for the former." Unquote. Theology in the Russia Diaspora, Aiden Nichols, page 86. Cobain's misinterpretation is latent in a gross assumption and is the same mistake he makes in on Unity 4. 
that apostolic authority stems from or at the very least is similar to a common Protestant fallacy against apostolic succession and it is that the church is now only to be interpreted in light of the apostolic church temporal, temporally analog analogously or politically but not absolutely successively and essentially for many Protestants the authority of the apostles ceased after the death after their deaths and now anyone in like manner can assume it for themselves insofar as they can subjectively figure out the right faith only the Catholic Church defends an absolutely Christological apostolic succession the autocephalous error is not in its succession but in its essence it does not place the entire church as stemming from the apostles essentially but only from Peter and thus it is not in the true sense apostolic if it attributes all the authority of the bishops to sharing equally by identity in their chair of Peter. This is also clearly not what, Cyp what Cyprian had in mind in On Unity 4. Cabain would have us interpret the absolute nature of Peter's authority as having transitive in the pa passive sense to all others. But the text of Cyprian refutes this transitive notion of authority in favor of a permanent notion, and his entire work on the unity of the church assumes that he speaks from within the unity of the apostolic church Christ founded. And so it's not proper to interpret his words on Peter or Peter's chair neither in either the 54th epistle or on the unity of the church for as taking their weight by a transitive source of Peter unto all bishops that would make all apostles intrinsically equal to bishop to Peter in their own offices which is unquestionably falsified biblically and patristically it is true that all bishops share in Peter's chair but that's not because Peter as rock and his chair divided after his death it's because as, as Cyprian says the throne of Peter now still exists and its oneness sustains all the others. Giles and Chapman dealt with this point in the work many of us quote for Cyprian's text. Quote, Don Chapman stresses the, the words upon the one he builds the church. That one is Peter. Peter is the rock. And the idea of a temporary rock is, is, is absurd. There is no mention of priority in time from these letters. It seems clear to Chapman that Cyprian means Peter, like the bishop, to be a permanent and not transient guarantee of the unity of the edifice which rises upon a single rock." Unquote. Shaft too destroys this false Anglican interpretation of first order in time and not essential in authority of being. Quote, Cyprian's doctrine of the church transferring the predicates of unity holiness and universality exclusively exclusiveness and maternity directly to the actual church of the time which with a firm episcopal organization an unbroken succession and the Apostles Creed triumphantly withstood the 80 or the 100 opposing sects in the heretical catalog of the day and had its visible center in Rome." Unquote. History of the Church, Volume 3, Shaft, uh, 1119 to 1020. So Peter in his, and his primary successors, and all bishops in communion with that primary successor, must essentially and not transiently or by honor in time or political clout be given his primacy of authority. Cyprian teaches this, and so does our Lord. To Peter, that the church is safeguarded and will not even possibly be prevailed against by hell. For Cyprian, the church is active, universally unified institution and body of Christ in the now, and is unified in, by the living voice of Peter. As Cyprian writes, quote, Nevertheless, Peter, upon whom the same Lord the church has built, speaking one for all, and answering with the voice of the church says, Lord, to whom shall we go? Under the autocephalous interpretation of Cyprian, Peter's chair has no universal living voice. There is no voice that speaks for all as Peter did. That this voice now, by the autocephalous sects, 
is said to be contained regionally in the bishops as the icon is Peter is true only regionally and locally but absolutely not universally or in the universal sense of Cyprian's church. If such bishops spoke in the strictest Petrine sense, in the fullness of the Petrine office and with the full power of his keys, as Christ promised hell cannot prevail against it, and thus neither could heresy and such local and regional bishops 